Sure. And that's Joy Taylor with the news. Well, that's the news. And thanks for stopping by. The Herd Live. He's, of course, worked for us. He's worked for the other places. He knows everything that goes on inside the NBA. And you should listen to his show. It's a really good one. Uh, he partners with Crazy Rob Parker, Crazy Uncle Rob Parker. He's Chris Broussard of Fox Sports fame. What's happening, man? If you were to write, uh, you wouldn't write the headline. You'd write the kind of opening salvo into all that was yesterday with the Lakers, with the league culminating in that last possession where LeBron didn't even touch the ball. Right. <laughs> and somehow Rondo, of all guys, the former Celtic, jumps up and hits a miracle shot to kind of feel like he saved their season. How would you write it? What would it yeah, sound like? Yeah, I, I tweeted actually last night that that game may have saved their season. It was a tremendous game. And if you want to be an optimistic Lakers fan, you can look at it just kind of how you described it and say – Man, this was this it's all coming together. You know, we had our heartache around the trade deadline. Now everybody's healthy except Lonzo who'll be back. Uh and we had this great win and we're going to roll from there. One thing I like Doug is last night you mentioned it. LeBron didn't wasn't even involved in the last play. I like that the young guys did not defer to him. Whether it was I, I don't think it was out of anger or spite, but even if that was it you know, or even if it was just they're really true professionals with great character and could move past the trade deadline stuff right away. Whatever the case, whether it was Kuzma hitting the big three and whether it was Ingram going to the hole and saying, I'm going to take the last shot, which we've seen him do before, they weren't looking to LeBron like, save us. What should we do now? He's covered. I like that in those guys. I thought they showed a lot of heart. Uh, Joy and I got in this discussion, and... I don't know. I don't know if it's a guy thing. I don't know if it's just depends on the makeup of a human being thing. If your upbringing, I, I have no idea what it is. I do think that certain people get caught on. I I, I remember I I texted Joy. And I don't know if we, I remember. No, don't remember if we texted back. One day I was driving in. And I'm listening to Joy and she's talking about like, listen, women don't forget. They what was the expression used? They put it up on the shelf. I think. Just, I mean, we have a storage, you know, like a filing <laughs> cabinet of the things. You know, that we would bring up later. They do. And, they I, was, don't and I was driving, I, I, I and I'm, I'm like driving, and I shouldn't be texting. I'm texting Joy like, that was the that was the greatest analogy I've <laughs> ever heard, because that's exactly, sorry, but that's what my wife does. That's she, right. Like, you're in the middle of a discussion about something, and then she goes in. Just, I, I, I'm just like, all right, I'm over it. Like, we're moving on. Right. People that have even done me wrong, for the most part, you know, I've, I, I just, I, you know, I, I take it for what you are today and what I'm hopeful of. Maybe it's the, the, the belief that, that people evolve. Into, I don't know what it is. D um, do you think they can get over this week? Because if you, if you look back two days ago, you're like, damn, they are not over it. Right. I think one last night was proof that they can get over it. And we're, you might say, oh, that was just one game and maybe adrenaline, whatever the case. But no, I think it was proof. And I also think that, I, I said this, I expected them to have a few games at least where it was clearly they were still in a funk, they were demoralized, dispirited, all that. I wasn't 100% sure that they would get over it for the rest of the season. Uh, and I thought that Magic needed to meet with the players and be like, look, I know it was a tough week. I get it. Um, unless you're one of those top two or three players in the league this is going to happen. This won't be the only time, perhaps, that your name is in trade rumors. But if you want to play in this league and be successful, you've got to be able to put things like this behind you. Whether it's you don't get along with a teammate, whether it's some scandalous stuff that went on within the locker room, whether it's you got problems at home, whether it's you think you should be making more money than the guy that, you know, is in front of you or, or whatever the case, or it's like this. You know, you were going to be traded. You have got to be able to play your A game despite stuff like this going on. And if you can't, this might not be the league for you. Now, that talk may not be necessary because it looked like last night they went out and they handled their business. And so I, I definitely think they'll get over it. Uh, there are reports that Magic is going to meet with a team in Philadelphia. And is that really? It, yes. I didn't see it. And okay. it, just, it just came down moments ago that he's going to meet a he team. Can, in, you, Magic, you can use that speech if you need he it. Can, <laughs> <laughs> He'll do the smile thing. <laughs> but he, you're, He'll you're, know what to say. I but honest, honest to goodness, like, 
you're right. That's that's what is we we say like what's a professional like people. I remember you know Jeff Van Gundy when doing his broadcast said, well he's a he's a total pro. Like that's what yep. a pro does. Yeah. You're sick. You have a bad day. Right. Your daughter's sick. Your wife is giving you business. Your girlfriend, whatever. You got to show up, or you don't like a teammate. You don't like a coach. Like it, this is a job, and I I compared it similarly in terms of a LeBron James the first six months like any new boss. He's everybody's friend, and he <laughs> plots and tries to figure out, and then he tries to make one big move. And in this case, it ended up being kind of ancillary bottom of the bench guys, but they thought about making a huge move. It just it didn't pull up. Speaking of that huge move, all right, here, here's what I want to do. Coming up next, AD isn't going to L.A. for now. Okay? So where is he going? Where is he most likely to go? I want to get to that, plus last night's All-Star draft. And um, Sixers made a big move. Raptors made a big move. Uh, Bucks made a, made a, a pretty big move as well. How viable are these threats in the East to the Boston Celtics, who were everybody's favorite when the season began? We'll get to that upcoming next. Joy Taylor, Chris Broussard, I'm Doug Gottlieb. This is the Hurt.